a cool thing. Yeah. Or take more than one. Well, there's a hundred pages. So it's like and I can get told me gathering her friends together was like writing cats. <laughs> I'm glad we had enough catnip to get you on here. <laughs> Ren was very special to all of us in different ways. She was one of the best people I ever knew. My partner in crime. The one that voice of reason when I needed it. A rock. I'm sure you all know that. She was always there when you needed her. She would always help you with whatever you needed, anytime. It didn't matter what she was doing. She'd drive across the country for us. She loved us. And she's still with us, I feel like, at least. I saw the raccoons this morning with her. It was nice to see them, they were so cute. Her favorite. Our little trash panda. <laughs> she was just. She was special. We'll never see anyone quite like it again. But she wanted us to keep going. She never wanted us to stop loving. She never wanted us to stop finding new love, finding new experiences, continuing living. She, the only thing she could even do to make her mad if you stop living. If you see her too soon, she probably will hate you. <laughs> right now she's up there dancing with all the gods, having a party. You know it. Hair, <laughs> right? Hair swaying in the cosmos. <laughs> she loved every one of us, and that never stops, no matter what. Her love will live on with us forever. I brought her dreads today, if anyone wants one, if anyone wants to smell them, I have them afterwards. If anyone wants anything else of Ren's, let me know, I'm to the point where I'm going to start getting rid of things, I want to get them good homes. So, some things you may ask for, I might say no, but that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> You'll understand. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick. Um, thank you, John. Um, I put my hand up to be master of ceremonies. Uh, I've done it for weddings. I haven't had the, uh, and I don't have the, the adjective to say for it, but the, the honor or the, the duty to, to do so for red. So I'm going to do my best uh, not to break down crying uh, and also not break down laughing, but I'll probably do a little bit. Uh, the, the key for celebration of life is they have them. They have laughter, they have tears, because uh, life is not just all the sweet, it's the sad and everything in between. Um, so keep that in mind as one person may cry, one person may laugh, and kind of understand it all comes from love. Um, my fellow trash pandas today. 
because uh, I know that term carries over from BC to Ontario, uh, which was clearly men's territory, uh, in most of North America. She ran the country. She ran the country. Uh, if, if it was, you know, if they given the title, it would have been better than what we just had in the past couple of years, to say the least. Um, and that, that brings me to every, between each of these speeches, I'm going to kind of be reminded of a lesson that I'm talking. And uh, when life gets run down, two feet in a heartbeat. Uh, she drilled into my head since my early 20s when I met her. It is, it is one of the written sayings that we all take away. The first speech I'm going to be the champion for Brent and uh, read her speech for her. Um, you'll excuse that I don't have the same accent. Um, it's not nearly as pretty, um, but the, the hair will go silver eventually. So we're almost there. Absolutely, it was Vince's fault. <laughs> so again, without the accent, which is... <laughs> uh, I love Ren from the day she was born, and I will continue to love her for the rest of my life, even though I'll never see her first again. January 31st was the worst day of my life. Ren was a very happy, outgoing little girl, and adults in particular really liked her. Unfortunately, as she got older, she was often bullied in school, which probably left some permanent scars. When she was young, she liked nothing better than to get dressed up and take the go train into Toronto and see whatever Andrew Lloyd Webber show was playing in Toronto. She loved all things theater, and her drama camp put on a great version of Thrill on the Roof one summer. She started on the road to her driver's license the first opportunity and was a fearless driver. That combined with some of her adventures when she was young probably accounts for most of my gray hairs today. <laughs> the first night she had her license, she drove a car up to the quarry, I know that quarry, <laughs> where she wasn't allowed to go. And it managed to blow out the car speakers, flatten the battery, while broadcasting loud music to the party through the open center of the <laughs> Several weeks later, she managed to steer a side mirror off the car. I was say. <laughs> she learned great outdoor skills as a girl guide and thought it was hilarious on a wilderness canoeing trip when she fell in a swamp while portaging through covered in leeches. <laughs> while she took girl guide cookies to high school to sell, the teacher thought she had stolen them and she couldn't believe a blue haired rebel could be guiding. <laughs> Red excelled at swimming from a young age and was a lifeguard instructor while in high school. The kids loved her as she was so gentle with them. I loved that she was a strong woman who would hurt for a while and treated badly, but would show great resilience and would move on and overcome whatever it was. She also a kind and empathic person, which is probably why so many of you are here today. She phoned me excited about something two days before she passed. She always called me if she was very happy or sad. I meant to call her back, but life gets busy, and I would call her the next day, but I didn't get the chance. Ren loved raccoons, but she loved, really loved all animals. Whatever her cats, dogs, humans she fucked up. Uh, we all, we had, or the ball python she wanted for her 16th birthday. She tried to catch a lizard in the Caribbean when she was small. And when the tail detached, she showed it still wiggling to the diners around us. Some of them nearly lost their lunch. A few years ago, Steve and I made a detour on our way back from the trip to me and Camloops Game Park. Ren and I wandered around for a few hours chatting with Mile Luminette while Steve took photos. This was her first time there, and we spent ages watching the grizzly bears. Ren always loved Halloween more than the other special days. I'm sure many remember going to events with her over the years. I was amused a few years ago when she bought a cat Halloween costumes for Minx and Mugs. <laughs> Steve had planned to put together a slideshow of Red earlier this year, but uh, he never really got over her death and he couldn't bring himself to do it. I'm sure he would appreciate what uh, together today. He would have loved having her around during his last weeks and days as she would have known exactly how to deal with him, and would have soothed him with a gentle touch. I'm not a religious person, but I hope they hang out some, together sometimes now. Ren can see ghosts and hair the ability from Steve's side. 
I wish I had the ability to talk to the court myself. I think I thank you all for making this a special event, and hope you get some closure from being happy and sad together. I have so many memories of Red and happy to share a few today, so make sure you ask questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I, I think there's enough lessons in that one still at least. Um, next speaker is missing. Yeah, you do. Well, I can share one quick memory. Uh, it's actually a core memory for me. Uh, I'm going to lean into a joke. Um, in my early 20s, I, I was, uh, you know, cisgendered, and um, Ren taught me about menstrual cycles and not to call them gross very quickly. So that is a core memory for me of a lesson from Ren is uh, the menstrual cycle of uh, Ferris sex and how to properly react when things go on. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best translation I could do for you. <laughs> okay, give me a second. Yeah, All right. I want to start by thanking Laura and John. This is, this is definitely needed. I was not positive about it. I'm glad you called me. I definitely could not have planned it. Um, when I was first proposed, I was neck deep in self pity, and I was correct. And I missed what I was I'm only a little bit surprised I left writing this to the night before today, uh, after a 15 hour drive. It's not that I can't think of what to say, it's that I have so much to say and lack of words to say less of it. I've spent the last six months or so processing her passing and I can I can definitely say that I am not done yet. I am not sure I ever will be. Uh, and then I met Evan, an especially difficult time in my life. I was 15 and was about to have nowhere to stay. When she heard I needed somewhere to live for a while, she was quick, not even really knowing me whatsoever, to offer me a space of the tiny room she rented. This very quickly became the most epic friendship I have yet had. Uh, since then, We've had more often than not lived in different cities, if not different provinces. We kept mostly different friends, didn't share much taste in music, or frequent the same place. Somehow this never mattered. It never mattered how long we hadn't seen each other, it was always like no time passed at all. All these things aside, we bonded over the stuff that actually mattered. I shared things that would never tell anyone else. She was judgmental when you were a complete screw up. <laughs> and said the hard things when they needed to be said. I don't make or keep friends easily. Everything was fun. Especially effortless with her. She loved me kids, and my son, who doesn't seem to remember what I told him yesterday, remembers her. <laughs> and some of the adventures that we had, he remembers being bit by the you know, boar through the fence and the head and food. <laughs> But also her, so. Sorry, I'm just lost in uh, Going through the last, I, last few years of text messages, you wouldn't have known that we hadn't seen each other in five years. In this space is only a small sample of the amazing people she calls friends and collected through her life. So many more could not be here. Some have never met. And others haven't seen each other in too many years. We flew or drove through provinces to be here today, and she would have loved to be here to see us all together. Hopefully we can find a way to enjoy her company from each other. She kept us all in her box of shiny things for a reason. There is no way I can possibly sum up everything that has raced through my mind since trying to write this. I've deleted more than I've said, and thought so much more than I believed. Some of it sounds good enough in actual words, or none of it sounds good enough in actual words. Sorry, it's getting a little blurry. And if I'm not crying already, I am. <laughs> I doubt I'd make it through a fraction of what I can say. I 
can't come to terms yet with living this life together. But also couldn't imagine my life without having met her. I do hope we find new friendships and refresh old ones today that she left pieces of herself in all of us. And she would have wanted to, us to share them. I brought a book that I hope everyone will make an addition to. I can scan and print the end results for anyone interested. If you want to take pages home and mail it back to me, that is also a file. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. Um, at this point in time, was there anyone else that would like to say anything? A little more pressure. Uh, feel free to post or send something into the book, whatever you need to do. Um, how do I how do I talk about red? Uh, sorry, did anyone? Who, is that a hand for or did you? Yeah. Yeah. you want to see a word? It's one for me. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Thank you, Edward. Uh, hello, everyone. I think I know maybe two of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met Ren um, at a movie night for Saw 2. Uh, great fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I and I remember like filming her and basically like interviewing her on on, on my phone and uh, she was always just like kind of weirded out yet uh, somehow enamored by it at the same time and and I, I, I don't even know how it happened they were all of a sudden our friendship just like blossomed almost instantly. And then some time later, we became roommates um, for six of the best months that I have ever had. And even in, on my and on my 22nd birthday, not to date myself or anything, but, um, we, uh, she planned. All, <laughs> I don't even know how she did it. But she managed to get like all these people showing up, and there's just like this constant rotation of people coming through, and they and I, I was meeting a lot of them for just like the first time, and and then I maintained quite a few of those friendships from that one night alone, and I have yet to have a birthday that has been as good as as good as that one, and um, and then the only reason that we moved apart was because our building got sold, so I uh, kind of had to. <laughs> and, um, and then I wanted to be closer to work, she wanted to stay downtown, and then, so then we just kind of went our separate ways. But then it, it, it never mattered how much time passed. Uh, whenever we would reunite, it was like we just saw each other yesterday. And the last time I saw her was for my friend's wedding. And, uh, and she stayed with me for the night, and her her love language was, uh, well, one of them was, was always food. And so, and she, and she actually taught me a lot about how to cook <laughs> on a minimal budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you mean I can get a complete, complete meal out of just vegetables? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> 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 and um, and so I just absolutely spoiled her. And, and um, but then the next the next day after after the wedding, I had actually left my blazer in her car, and so she drove back here to Canada with it. And um, but it's okay. I picked it up at Winners or something, so like <laughs> not a huge loss. But. Uh, and then the last time I talked to her was maybe about a year ago, and we're we're just laughing at everything we're we're just saying and just talking for hours. And like my like my face hurt from smiling and laughing so much. My stomach was 
I should probably have washboard abs at this point. Because, <laughs> hey, she was, she was just so fucking funny. And she thought I was hilarious somehow. <laughs> and um, I would, I remember she would always call me her, her, her Western Wesley. <laughs> yeah. I see that. Yeah. I see that. I don't care about Wesley. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of my, my claim to fame with her. And, um, so she said I was, I was her favorite person from, from Calgary. Uh, she said that uh, not many good things came out of Calgary except for me. <laughs> and um, she didn't yeah. tell you that. She never told me that. Oh, she told okay, she did tell that. Yeah. <laughs> I would just I would just hear about it and, and then just kinda like feel like I'm avoiding the possible high feed or something. Because <laughs> um, you know I get so shy in public situations, I just probably not. Yeah. <laughs> And she, she taught me a lot, um, like not to not to sweat the small stuff, and that everything has a beginning and an end, and and when things do end, it's just room for another beginning. And. Just to you, just those six months. When I, when I lived with her, she just just a fountain of wisdom. Someone who was only two years younger than me. <laughs> she actually thought I was older too, which was even more hilarious. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, yeah, I thought, I thought you were totally like older than me. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just aging incorrectly. <laughs> uh, not using my ole of gay. And we, we had just great instincts with each other. Um, she would she would come home at the end at, at the end of the day, and and I already and, and then I made too much dinner for myself, and and uh, she would just walk in the door, and I was, she'd be like, "Fuck, so exhausted." And I'm like, "Well, I made too much spaghetti, so if, if you want," and she would just hug me, just saying like, "Thank you," like I was just thinking about how hungry I was. And, uh, and then there were other times where I was like, hey, I made this ham bagel melt thing in the oven. And she's like, I don't need it. <laughs> she was too busy developing a B12 deficiency at that time. So, um, so that, was, that was kind of a wah wah kind of, kind of moment. But she was like, but you were thinking of me. And you did, you did something instead of just doing it for yourself. And that was, and that was, and that was all she asked for. She, it, it was always the thought that counted. And yeah, she was she was the fucking best. <laughs> so I look forward to meeting all of you. Um, I'm a little shy, so I'm not really want to make a first move. So. <laughs> Missy and I actually just met yesterday <laughs> when she picked me up from my apartment. We've known each other for like ten years. Yeah. <laughs> He just wants you to approach him instead. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was always at Wallflower and dancing. So I'm like, there's no guys here. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I did not prepare a speech. I was, I was not as well planned as he was. Um, <laughs> I mean, I do still journal, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't uh, have too much time to do that in between rounds of um, what was that game we were playing last night, Jeb? Sex, sex nymph? It's, it's this not what it sounds like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> At least not this version. Um, it's this this, this, this this card game. It's just kind of like a counting card game, and. Uh, yeah, we were all just too busy making innuendos all night, and, <laughs> and uh, until we all finally did did the rounds of yawning and went to sleep in my TV. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, 
to get tests to prepare too much, but I mean, I would. Set yourself up so hard there. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about. <laughs> um, Nothing. <laughs> anyway, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I think I. Yeah, so I didn't really like pre plan anything of what I was going to say or anything, but I mean, just like thinking of all the experiences that I had with her and, and everything is fuel enough uh, to fill my five minutes of dead air. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it also helps having an audience who can relate to a lot of things that I talk about. So thank you for the laughs. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. We love her. We love you. I ran her into her, had to show that she was clever, growing, kind of me and my friends and whatnot. And she was a security guard there. And I had like, I just like got my dreadlocks probably like a year or so before that from some other chick went out. And like, she's like looking at my dread and she's like, you need some, need some better maintenance, yo. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, okay, all right. And then, yeah, she, you know, that's how we became friends kind of deal. She had become my dreadlockist and uh, spent numerous hours, lots of painful hours, lots of good hours. <laughs> um, her just, uh, you know, talking, you know, and um, we've, de we've definitely like uh, enjoyed ourselves like, you know, out in, out, in, uh, out in the festival fields and stuff like that and whatnot, but definitely most of my interactions with her was just like, lots of therapeutic. Yeah, she was a very, very amazing woman. She was like uh, unconditionally like a lover for anyone. Um, she had a lot of love for everyone. She taught me how to love myself and others too. Um, just through the numerous like interactions I've had with her, and it's just like it's not easy when someone's working on your head for so many years. I kind of feel lost in that person here. Um, she was definitely a really important part of my life, and uh, like I wish that I could have had a lot more um, growth with her. Um, I'm sure I'll be all of it. She didn't really deserve to uh, to be gone this soon. I don't think so at all. Beautiful woman in many ways, inside and out. And um, taste of music was always fucking amazing. Written on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was always just sitting there and just it'd be all, all over the place the music, you know, but it was good. It was good. It kept kept us going through what we we're doing. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, there's just I don't know if I would be the man I am today if it wasn't for Ren. Um, she definitely has yeah, helped me get to where I am, and I do feel her spirit constantly um, with me, especially in the past few months. Um, but yeah, like, uh, definitely appreciate everyone for coming here and uh, honoring her, her life and her, um, her soul, her spirit, and her um, just everything about her is just beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. We all we are all were blessed and cured by Randy, I'd like to say. Yeah, I, I personally would love to see her again in the afterlife. I would love to. She's something that I cannot fucking yeah. Sorry about the language, but yeah. No. But, yeah. I don't think she might. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she might either. Yes, yeah. She's fucking beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll do my best. I 
Yeah, that's okay, man. First of all, uh, I want to apologize if I do freeze up. But uh, my name is Dan, and uh, I have uh, spent a lot enough of my time. I think there's three things I have to explain before I start. This silly shirt I'm wearing, the real shoes, and this shave. I just thought it'd be funny if I showed up this way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, uh, I met Karen when I, uh, when I was uh, working uh, on Bray Creek. Um, the first time we really hung out, uh, she kind of gave me this, this look through the, the pass in the kitchen. <laughs> and she asked me, what's up? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know, hopefully it'll be fun, I guess is what I was saying in my head. Um, but yeah, the, the, the first time that I got to spend time with her was uh, kind of a, a later night. And we just sat and she gave me the, uh, the comfort of like a friend I've known for a long, long time. But I just, I just met the girl, right? But uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't long. We spent quite a few... Uh, Quite a few days. Um, we had a, a very intimate but platonic relationship. Um, a lot of sitting out under the sky and talking for hours and hours. And I, yeah, I really, really hate to quote anybody, but um, I heard Maiden he wrote a song that rained like bloody head for like a week. He wrote me the good guy young. And it's really true for all of my closest friends. I'm not sure if it's just she used her heart too much for us. Like for all of us, and I barely recognize any of you. But that speaks to how she's kind of brought lots of people together, right? And uh, I, I'm just kind of grateful that we have the opportunity to kind of sit with each other and say hello. Because that, that, is, that is what life is. And uh, I, I know. Um, I keep the, uh, the text on my phone and the last phone call on my phone uh, the Thursday before. And uh, I just love chatting on the phone. Every time she called me, I pick it up. You know, they're working what? And uh, I, I refuse to think that I lost anything, but then I gained something from knowing it. Thinking of losing someone like that is too much. So I just, I want to, I want to think that um, my life was more enriched than it was lost from it. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. She was so good at calming me down if I was upset about something or I have um, I run really hot if I get hot, like get upset about something. She's so good about talking sense with 
not invalidating your feelings. And I felt like she had often used me as a sounding board. And I, knowing how huge her friend group was, it it felt like a sister. Like I'm more close to her than my family. And it, like so many have said, it's just weird to think that we can't pick up that phone or text her. But I know, like I already see her everywhere. Um, when I was a teen, I lost my mom, and she's, my mom was the closest person I've had to be the same type of relationship as a friend, like, just my best friend. And I know that as hard as it feels now, that later, I'm not gonna, she's not gonna be any less with me than she was when she was alive. Um, one really crazy thing to me about this whole thing was she actually saved my life right before she passed. It was the last thing she I had a really bad asthma attack. I haven't had one in ages. And I, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't speak, and I, she lives next door to me. And I literally I was like, oh my god, I hope Ren's up and I text her, I'm like, can you call an ambulance? Because I couldn't speak. And she responded right away. She never responds right away. She's like, she's like, I was setting my alarm to go to bed. <laughs> like, I'll call and I'll be right over. And she came over and she brought her inhaler and like gave me that and told that ambulance came, got me an ambulance, and then packed up a bag for me and came and brought me a bag the next day with like a charger and some things. I was in the hospital for like four or five days. The last time I saw her was I was got um, released from the hospital. She's like, I'm super tired. I'm gonna go to bed. Or go nap before John comes home. And I came over to drop off her bag so I didn't keep it right. And I was like, well, I'll see, like, I'll see you tomorrow then if you're gonna go to bed. But I, like, tucked her in and, like, made sure she had, like, a glass of water or whatever. And we just sort of chatted about, chatted for half an hour about what we were gonna do together over the week. And she'd always, you know, she'd always be and she was so good at getting me, like, like, uh, like, uh, who was mentioning, like, being able to feed someone on, on a nothing budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, and always just the most caring person. She always, not just made time for someone, but always was thinking about you. Like she'd show up with a sticker that she thinks she'd like. Even if it was something small, she like if I was going into the city, she'd send me stickers for Raz. Like it was just like I I knew that they hadn't dated for ages, but they were able to keep that friendship and. So many people wouldn't be able to do that with and she I don't think there's any partner she had that she didn't have some sort of relationship with after, which is just a testament to her character. Um, but yeah, like I said, tucked her in, she was super happy, just excited about life and and then later I came back, saw John and she was just just like the little spread snores on the couch and I remember so peaceful and so like, and I know she'd been talking about how for the last like couple weeks or she hadn't been able to get a good sleep I just feel like I hope that she's continuing having that rest and having she was a very busy and she fit more into her life than most people do in, in their whole their whole life even if they had a do over it so I think we're all better off for doing this I know I am Definitely not going to forget her. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you. Oh, I want to mention, um, I uh, had a lot of dust this year, so I was already going to make some dream catchers for my aunt out of, like, her mismatch jewelry and stuff for my aunt's, like, uh, close friends and nieces and nephews and stuff. I am down to do the same with and had a whole bunch of uh, gauges, and I was thinking they would make really neat center pieces, especially if I could get one of the red just for that, and I could put a piece of the red in the center, and then just, I wouldn't be able to make, and it might take me a couple years to get through them all, but, because um, I hand make everything, so if anyone wants one, maybe I can get a, like, get a piece of paper and make a list with like your favorite colors and stuff like that. We'll talk about it just a bit. Last call, anyone else would like to speak? Hey everybody, thanks.
speed in here. I had no intention of standing up. Who knows how this goes? But uh, some beautiful things said, and it's inspired me to mostly tell a completely inappropriate story. <laughs> Someone had to. <laughs> That's my job. Um, I've been a weirdo my whole life, and Rip was the only weirdo who was so weird that we understood each other. That was really beautiful, and I'll never have that again. Um, we were so similar uh, in so many ways. But uh, we were also extremely different. Uh, she was four years younger than me, but she was uh, so much stronger than me. In so many ways. Uh, she always really helped me in that regard. And I think this appropriate story is a nice illustration of that. So, uh, I appreciate drugs. Brad appreciated drugs. <laughs> and uh, the first time I decided to take LSD, um, it was with my psychonaut spirit guide sister. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, to me, I didn't even want to use that. <laughs> um, I was visiting Vancouver for the first time. I decided I would try LSD and go to the art gallery with her. <laughs> that was fantastic. I remember we kind of split apart in the gallery and then we found each other again and I was like, do you know there's a fucking dinosaur skeleton made of patio furniture? And she's like, I know! <laughs> um, so, uh, we had a nice time in the art gallery and then uh, we took a walk at God knows what time, probably two in the morning, through Haven Wastings. Because um, that was where you want to be with a handful of LSD. Yes. <laughs> um, and we just sat and we stopped outside of this building. And I started getting spun out because I started thinking about all these homeless people and the direness of that situation. Being the crap professional she was. <laughs> she, uh, she reaches into her purse and grabs these fucking ridiculous rainbow gloves. Like, these are the happy buds. Put these on. <laughs> and it did. It changed me. It just changed me. And she knew how to fix that. And she, she, she's like, yep, I've always got these. I, these work. These are the happy buds. So, that's really it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and I guess the last thing I want to say is um, to my eternal regret, Brent and I found out the last four years of her life and didn't speak. I have to look at that, but um, I just wanted to share that with you all. That I have friends who are in similar retarded situations, and the moment she died, that's what it was. I was like, ah, I'm an idiot, and I've done something I'm always going to regret. And I did shortly realize after that Ren, Ren would hold me to that. Um, he, she would feel that way. Me and her We were so I love him and I don't, I'm not upset with you. We were so similar, we were just being stuck to this. But I just wanted to share with you people that and just implore you not to uh, not do stupid things like that would pick you up because we all know that we match in a second. So, um, yeah, thank, thank you for all being here and for being great friends with my sister. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you to all the, the last minute speakers. I it is it happens. You say it for a thought, but you know, the spirit of Ren, if you wanna say it like that, in uh, many languages. Um, I, I how do we experience the different eras that uh, Ren has gone through and I'm just I have some of the regrets to me that we have drifted in the last couple years since the plague. Um, but I, I always feel blessed about the errors that I was able to be with her, interact with her, and feel that blessing of having her part of my life, and feel that energy through all your and your stories. Uh, so thank you everyone for being here today.
Uh, we had one more speech in a, a, a group building activity, so to speak. Um, Laura, if you're ready. Thank you, Laura. Honorable mention to Ice-T. 
Bath and Body Works fall candles, and she would spread them all over and send me a photo. Look at you today. <laughs> no name brand chocolate coconut cookies. There's a box of them over there. <laughs> Bailey's, making references to Narnia. The Practical Magic House, where we went to live. The Library for the Amethyst, and daydreaming about our future as little old ladies, where we pledge to do things like sit on the porch, drink the tea, listen to the rain, rescuing dogs, doing crafts, making soup. Thank you. 